Tomorrow marks three years since heavy rains and flawed dams led to a devastating flood that ruined lives and damaged property in Gladwin, Midland and Saginaw counties. And to this day, the recovery is ongoing. tv 5s James Felton has an update on the progress and what still needs to be done. I wake up every single day hoping that the water is going to be here. That's what life has been like for Gary Convery for the last three years. He moved to the Gladwin County community of Hay Township to live along Smallwood Lake. Convery was like so many others that could only sit and watch as water drained out after the Edenville Dam downstream failed on May 19th, 2020. We live on a bluff. We weren't in any damage or anything, so we feel blessed that... Uh, but other people had a lot of hard times. They've lost everything. We never lose that. We lost water is all we lost. Small wood and Seacord Lakes feed into Wixom Lake. That's where we talked with Stephanie Aldrich. She's the general manager at Strikers Lakeside Marina. Definitely challenging to be a marina that has no water in their lake. And even though the water is gone, Aldrich is doing her best to stay afloat. We definitely don't employ as many people as we have in the past. Um, we are definitely reaching out, um, branching out further, looking, you know, uh, for customers, you know, more advertising further out, uh, just doing what we can. Holding out hope that this field will be a lake again soon. Water is life for us. That, that's how we, we keep the doors open, stay in business. These empty bowls serve as a reminder of the devastation that took place in Gladwin, Midland and Saginaw counties. So when might this scar go away? We still have a few more years for the water to come back, but the good news is we've got Seacord and Smallwood underway, and these dams are on the path of being permitted this year, so we're hoping everything gets constructed by the end of 2025. David Kepler is the president of the Four Lakes Task Force. He tells us he wants to see the water here, too. There's a lot of challenge to that, but we want to make sure we do it from a safety point of view, get the cost right as best we can for the community, and, and make sure we have these dams sustainable. And while everyone waits for the water to return, progress in the flood recovery here in Sanford and other areas affected by those rising waters continues. Our village park is a huge, you know, it's like the heart of downtown Sanford. Um, and so that will be returning this year and hopefully the kids will be back playing at the fields uh, next spring. Teresa Quintana is the co-creator of Sanford Strong. She says the recovery process is going well. We've got like a Big B Coffee drive through coming. Um, we may have a cat cafe that's coming, which is a quirky little concept, but people seem to love it. Um, we have Cultivate Coffee and Tea that just opened downtown. Um, Red Oak reopened, you know, a year after the flood. They're doing really well. Their building is beautiful. Um, so there's Huntington Bank had rebuilt and, and reopened. And it's not just Sanford. Kepler tells us a lot of effort is going into bringing this area back. By the end of 2022, there was over $58 million of investment done here. We stabilized the dams. We put a system in place. We've done a lot of shoreline uh, improvements, as you can see. And so we're in a position now to move into restoration, and we want to step into that phase, and we're like two out of the four dams going, and we'll get the other two moving this year, and we feel confident that we'll finish that up as soon as we can. Meanwhile, property owners have lawsuits that are still flowing through the court system. The state of Michigan and the federal government uh, are denying that they should be held accountable for what happened, and they're utilizing the legal process to delay and deflect accountability. Attorney Michael Pitt is one of the lawyers involved with lawsuits seeking damages tied to the flood at both the state and federal levels. He tells us the state of Michigan is being sued for inverse condemnation, claiming the state's actions led to the impairment of private property without just cause or compensation violating Michigan's Constitution. The cases were filed in 2020. The state was denied a motion to dismiss the lawsuits. It appealed. The Michigan Court of Appeals heard arguments on April 12th. And while there has been no decision yet, Pitt expects this to end up in the Michigan Supreme Court. Lawsuits have been filed in federal court against the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, alleging that FERC was negligent in granting Boyce Hydro a license to operate the dams that failed. A judge dismissed the lawsuits in 2021. 
Pitt appealed. Oral arguments on that appeal will take place in Cincinnati on June 13th. There's also a decision pending on lawsuits filed in the Eastern District of Michigan, and more lawsuits are expected to be filed in federal court no later than August 24th. We think eventually there'll be a day of reckoning. Attorney Scott McFarland works at a different firm, but is also representing flood victims. It's a big case, so hopefully it, it does carry some weight and a little bit of urgency with that, given the, the broad spectrum of people and, and businesses and entities that have been affected. Um, the other driver is, you know, we really hope by now to be involved in some sort of settlement negotiations with the state. And their MO thus far has been to uh, delay, deny, and defend claims. Three years later, and as of now, it is unclear when these lawsuits will be resolved. This is a long process. Uh, this is not something that's obviously going to happen overnight. Probably, you know, I, I tell them probably another year. Um, but again, it, it, it's hard to say with... Uh, with the way that the courts can operate. And while the fate of litigation is uncertain, there is growing confidence the water will be back three years from now. For his part, Convery thinks the Four Lakes Task Force will make his home the place it was meant to be. I'm glad we got them here to um, get the projects going. Uh, we're on the Zoom meetings with them. Um, we see the progress they're making, so they're moving forward. So I'm happy to see that. James Felton, WNEM TV5. We reached out to the state of Michigan and the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission for comment. Both declined.